Hey everyone, you're watching the Esperanza 243 again. <laughs> this is Long Live Manavia Part 24. Um, a friend of mine has introduced me to a recipe I've never heard of until a week or two ago. It is called potato candy. I've attempted at making it, and I suck. I can't even, I can't even get mashed potatoes made correctly. Um, potato candy is actually like a little, as, it's called potato candy because you use mashed potatoes. Um, you mix that with, um, with, uh, powdered sugar, milk, and vanilla extract, and, and also a little bit of salt. Um, surprisingly, considering milk and salt is already in mashed potatoes, uh, Anyways, you use that, you use those four things with the mashed potatoes to make dough, surprisingly. And what you do is that um, you just spread out the dough um, and you use um, a little bit more powdered sugar uh, just for dusting, you know, to use like what chefs do with dough. The powdered dough. Powdered dough, sorry. Um, and then you spread peanut butter on that layer of dough and roll it up and then you stick it in the fridge to let it sit. sit. Um, and according to this particular recipe, you let it sit in the fridge for an hour. Although the particular recipe that my friend used, he let it sit in the fridge overnight. Ow. Um, anyways... Uh, so I'm going to try to make it uh, when I get back from my exercise class tonight. Oh, that's what I was trying to talk about in my other video. Um, I am in a exercising class, shockingly, um, considering the place I live in has an exercise room. But I've actually learned quite a few things uh, by taking this exercise class. Um, and I've met some pretty nice people there, too. Um, <laughs> anyways, let's get to the book. Uh, I'm going to do a recap of Part 23. Uh, part 23, I, we read, we read, um, of Caprice getting a surprise gift. Surprise presents. And oh my gosh, it's a beautiful sword. Oh, beautiful sword. And she meets, uh, she, a few days later after that, she, uh, oddly meets a young man named Nicolau. After a woman stole her change purse. And she... <laughs> I didn't really give her a reason why, but I... I didn't really give it a reason why. But she decided to lead Nicolau to Senor Pujadas' house. I probably should figure out why I got her to do that because there's really no reason why well there is a reason why to further along the book but the actual reason for her to do that I don't know why I need to figure that out um, anyways let's get to it I should get back to the hotel anyway I have a lot of outfits to make by tomorrow morning Nicolau's ears perked up. You are a dressmaker? She nodded. I also make men's clothing. My mother, she... She raised me well. The young man realized her mother died. It became quiet. Which hotel are you staying? 
Perhaps I could come for a visit someday. Before she could reply, the door to her friend's house suddenly opened. Nicola, what a surprise it is to see you here, Senor Pujadas cried. He spoke to him in English. Caprice stared with wide eyes. I see you have met Miss Caprice. Senor Pujadas, I did not know you lived here, Nicolau said with surprise. Then she looked at Nicolau with surprise. He spoke English perfectly. Would you two like to come inside? He asked. I need to speak to both of you together. Caprice nodded, but the young man shook his head. I need to get back home. It is getting late. In that case, I should get back to the hotel. There is a lot of work for me to do. Her friend looked at her with admiration. Then what I have heard is correct, he said, facing Caprice. Senora Fonye helped you to meet your aunt? She nodded. In fact, she was rather excited to see the dresses I made for her. She bought two of them. Nicola became shocked. Wait, your aunt lives here? How is that possible? I was raised in Maltrova, she told him. She looked around, came closer to him, and leaned toward her, and leaned toward his ear. My parents adopted me. I came to Manavia to find out who my birth parents are, she whispered. He became confused. Miss Caprice, Senor Pujadas warned. She and Nicolau looked at him. Have we, I believe we should be telling him this inside. Her eyes widened. Wait a minute, he's the one? He nodded. Are you sure we should tell him now? What if he runs off like I did? Her friend gave her a look. What is the difference between Cassius and I? She sighed. He prefers telling the truth at the right time. We prefer telling it sooner than later. He nodded. If we are to discuss this, we should do it now than tomorrow. <clears throat> Whatever it is you two are talking about, we have to do this tomorrow, Nicolau said. He disagreed. I must be home soon or Mother shall worry. I shall send her a message, Nicolau. We need to discuss this now, he said firmly. Nicolau sighed. Then he walked up to the door and entered the house, with Caprice following behind. Soon they were in the foyer. Nicolau and Senor Pujadas sat down in separate chairs. Caprice sat in a couch. What is going on? Nicolau asked. Are you two hiding something? She and Senor Pujadas looked at each other. I wish we had thought this through, she said to her friend. She sighed. I wish you had told me where he was. He gave her a look. Would you have believed me? She thought about it. No, I would not. I would have kept my I would have kept an open mind though. What are you two talking about? Nicolau, how much of Manavia's history do you know? I remember most of it, he replied. I was homeschooled, though. You know that. Caprice eyed her friend and then looked at her brother. You were probably too young to remember, but do you remember hearing any rumors about Princess Mariona or Prince Frederick? She watched him as he thought for a while. No? No, I don't remember. Lately, though, I have been hearing that someone is walking around Inra masquerading as Princess Mediona. Caprice became shocked and looked at her friend. 
He doesn't know what Princess Mediona looks like? She nearly cried. Nicola became frightened as Senor Pujadas looked embarrassed. To be honest, I was afraid of showing him. I wasn't sure if... He paused and looked at the young man. He sighed and then looked back at Caprice. I wasn't sure if you would come back. Nicolau gasped. You mean to tell me that she's the one who looks like that princess? He cried. Senor Pujadas, I think it's time you showed him their portraits. The senor sighed. Follow me, Nicolau. He said as he stood up, you need to see this. Caprice followed them as the senor walked to a parlor room. The walls of that particular parlor room were filled with portraits, landscapes, and other paintings. Most landscapes and some portraits were done by famous artists, others by local artists, whom he knew personally. There was one painting in particular that caught Caprice's eye, eyes. It was a still life of a group of people eating and drinking. I admire this painting, Signor Bruno. He looked at the painting she was looking at and smiled. I believe that is called De Adapolitos. He paused. If I remember correctly, that's Dutch for the potato eaters. Eaters. It was done by someone named Pablo Picasso. <laughs> he doesn't know who Picasso is. I am such an idiot. She looked at each person in the painting. He did a very good job. Yes, he did. Honestly, I prefer Impressionism paintings. This is not in line with the bright colors I am used to seeing nowadays. Bruno, who are these people? Nicolaus spoke up. They looked toward him and smiled. He looked at the senor and gave a look of confusion. Why do they look familiar? The portraits were of his true family, the previous prince and princess of Navia. He looked back at the portraits as Caprice and the senor walked up to him. It is obvious on who one of them is, she said. Nicolau looked at her. His eyes widened. The woman is Princess Mediona? It is her, she told him. The man is Prince Frederic. Who is the elderly woman, then? That is Princess Mediona's mother, Senor Pujada said. Suddenly, a thought popped into Caprice's mind. I could say he looks like them instead of blurting it out, she thought. She became excited, but tried not to show it. Why, Nicola, you resemble the prince and princess a bit, she gaped. How could that be? She, uh, you're right, Caprice. He does seem to resemble a bit like them, Senor Pujada said, picking up on her signal. What? he cried. I do not look like them. The senor sighed. Caprice couldn't, uh, Caprice couldn't help but roll her eyes. It was becoming fruitless. Senor Pujadas turned to leave, but the young man stopped him. I am getting tired of this, Bruno. Stop treating this as a mystery for me to solve. What are you and Caprice doing? What is it you want me to realize? It, was, it became quiet again. Caprice looked down as Senor Pujadas figured out what to say. Do you remember learning of a riot before Prince Nicolaus' reign? Senor Pujadas asked. He nodded. The night of the riot, you were born.
What? He and Caprice cried. Why didn't you tell me? Nicola became surprised of her cry. You did not ask me. She groaned. Ugh, of all the days of the year, my parents had to pick summer. Actually, the riot occurred about a week before summer started. Nicolau told her. He paused. Wait a minute. Are you saying you were born during the riot? From what Bruno said, I believe so. And so were you. She was a tad upset to find her birthday was the same day of the riot. Nicolau was surprised to find he and Caprice had the same birthday. The next second, he remembered something. He looked at the two portraits again. Wait a minute, he whispered. I recognize them now. They live a few farms away from me. He looked at Senor Pujadas. I thought they were dead. They are alive? Caprice whispered excitedly. The Senor nodded. She looked at her brother. Take me to them, please. Nicolau tensed up, and they could tell. The room suddenly went quiet. He closed his eyes. He slowly took a deep breath and held it for a few seconds. Then, he slowly let the deep breath out. Senor Pujadas eyed him with concern. What does my birth have to do with the riot? Caprice and her friend looked at each other. It is best if you tell them, Caprice. The senor said. She nodded as she sighed. Then she looked at Nicolau. During the rioting days, before and after the actual riot, there were rumors that Princess Mariona was pregnant. Very few people know the truth of the rumors, including Bruno and myself. What is the truth? Nicolau asked. She was pregnant. His eyes widened. You are the son of Princess Mariona and Prince Frederic. His eyes grew bigger. What does that make you, then? Surely there could be no one who looks like her who is not related to her. He nearly bellowed. I am their child as well. Nicola blinked with surprise. She was pregnant with twins. You and I are brother and sister. He was completely stunned. He didn't know what to say. Uh, it became quiet once again. For a long time. I have to go. Nicola whispered. It took almost five minutes for him to walk out of the parlor room. He was too stunned. He was too surprised for words. She knew we were related since we walked into Bruno's house, he thought as he walked from the parlor to the front door. Well, that explains why I was schooled more than my friends. I wonder if Mom and Dad knew. It would be wise to end the story here, but then Caprice's full adventure wouldn't be told, or her brother's. Now that Caprice met her brother, she had to face a lot more than that. That goes the same for her brother. She did not hear from Nicolau for days on end. She was worried that he would reject his true family's history, like she did. Almost two weeks later, she could not handle the tension. She went to Senor Pujadas' house and asked him where Nicolau lived. Within an hour, she had arrived. The farm was beautiful. Trees surrounded both sides of the house. Three trees grew in the front yard. Most of the land had been used for farming. The rest of it was a beautifully done flower garden. Caprice smiled at the family's property. She walked up to the front door and knocked on it. A few minutes later, 
A nice woman answered the door. She looked at Caprice with wonder. May I help you? She asked. I am looking for Nicolau. Is he here? The woman hesitated. He is uh, indisposed at the moment. Would you like to leave a message? Caprice sighed. Has he put off any of his chores lately? She asked airily. The woman became surprised at her question. Has he? How did you know? Please tell him that he cannot ignore what happened at Senor Pujalas' house. It is important that he does not ignore it. It was quiet for a moment. Who are you? Why do you want me to tell him this? I apologize. My name is Caprice. She replied with an apologetic face. I am Nicolau's friend. The woman's eyes widened. I assume you are his mother? I am she, she said as she nodded airily. She couldn't help but stare at Caprice. My, you look an awful lot like Princess Mariona. Cause Caprice smiled. I hear that a lot. There was a moment of silence. Caprice stepped closer toward his mother, but she stayed outside. What are you? Please keep it down, she, she interrupted her, whispering. You must be really close to Nicolau, correct? The woman nodded worriedly. I cannot keep this a secret from you then. He knows he was adopted. Nicolau's mother widened her eyes. He, ha he has known this for almost two weeks. I fear he is hiding from me, from Senor Pujadas. Does he know who his parents are? Caprice widened her eyes. Do you know who they are? She asked wordily. And that is where I stop. Shocker! You know me, I love cliffhangers. I suppose that's it. Oh. I gotta get ready for my exercise class, and I will see you guys later. The next video you will see it will be Long Live Manavia Part 24, and possibly a karaoke video. This is the Esperanza 243, signing off.